Good morning, everybody. It's Saturday morning. I'm sitting in my van outside of our local thrift store. Why are you doing that, Hillary? Well, I decided for our first video, we're going to do what I love to do, and that is to take something that's been discarded or people see no value in it, paint it up, and make it look beautiful. So I'm going to head in there. I'm going to see what I can find for us and stay tuned. Well, guess who it is? So remember I told you yesterday that I was gonna find something for us to paint, something to restyle? Here it is, lamps. Are they cute? I don't know if you can see this on camera, but it has got the coolest little pattern. And this one does too, look at this. I hate plain brown. If you know me, you know that's true. So we're gonna paint these babies up today. I'm not sure how many coats it's gonna take, but we're gonna have some fun. So what am I using today for paint? What I always use, I use country chic paint. I've tried lots and lots of different brands. There's lots of good ones out there, but country chic is where I settled. One of the reasons is there is no VOC, so it's good for you. So that's always a good thing, right? Um, as you can see, I've been painting. My hands are a mess, and I think we should just get started. So, what color am I using? Wow, Country Chic has just come out with a whole bunch of new colors. This one is called Pop the Bubbly. And if this video doesn't work, I just might have to do that. So what do you do when you first get your paint? Of course, there'll be a lid on it. You're gonna shake it up, and then I like to open up the paint. There we go. Let's see if I can spill this. And I take my stir stick and I mix. Because you wanna make sure that you get all of that goodness from the bottom mixed up and ready to go. Now, unless I'm doing a huge piece, I never paint out of the can. So why is that, Hillary? Well, because it can contaminate your can when you are dipping it in, you're brushing, and then you put it somewhere else and you get some dust. So I just take a little dish of some sort, pour some in. Mmm, this color is gonna be fun and never waste it. Good stuff. So, I've got my Country Chic Paint brush. This is a one and a half. I like the size. I like to hold my brush kind of low down here. I feel like I, whoops, I feel like I get a lot more control. As you can see, I have taped off anything that I don't want to get paint on, because you might not have to, but I'm a bit of a sloppy painter. So let's get started. You'll see that you may need two coats of paint. So you can dab any ill which way, get into the paint, get into all those little cracks and crevices. This is like me putting my makeup on in the morning, having to get into all the little cracks and crevices. So comment below, let me know how many of you have painted before. Let's get to know each other a little bit. I know that I have some painters that follow me and come into the store. And if you haven't painted, why are you not painting? It is so much fun. You can take ugly brown stuff and make it just beautiful. So you can see that we're probably going to have to have two coats for sure. When you're painting with the chalk paint or clay paint, I find that this is almost like, like a primer. The first coat, it just kind of gives it some teeth. So one thing to remember that when you're using country sheet paints that you don't have to prime anything. So I get a lot of questions. Do you have to sand? No, you don't have to sand, but you can. <laughs> so I didn't sand this at all. And this paint is going to adhere really well to this lamp. It takes probably about three weeks to fully cure but I have never had these pieces come off. This paint. Jeez, I should have had that second coffee this morning. Anyway, what do you think? Starting to look good? We're not gonna be super fussy, because if we're gonna give it a second coat, voila, how easy was that, you guys? That's like five, 10 minutes out of your time. All right, so the next lamp, this cute little lamp, I'm gonna paint 
with a mixture of country chic paint. I put a little of this, a little of that, because I wanted to develop this cover myself. Isn't this gorgeous? So now for some kind of fun news. Let's get started on this. I get to hand this paint into Country Chic and they will make this color exclusive to the Shabby Vintage Bell. But the problem is I need a name for this color. So I think we need to have a contest. So you guys can help me name this color. Isn't this pretty? Anybody that knows me knows like I'm kind of crazy over turquoisey colors. But this, mmm, this color is awesome. So you can see that with the little indents, the little, little uh, cool things on here, sometimes you have to get your brush right in there. It's okay not to paint up and down. Dab your brush in there and let's get some paint in. See what I mean? You don't always have to go up and down. Be adventurous. I think people that uh, have to have everything, how shall we say, in straight lines, this would be kind of fun for them to try. Alrighty, does that look like I got most of it? So we're gonna let this dry for a little bit and I'm gonna come back and we'll put on the second coat. All right, don't run away. Okay, we're back. So something I should tell you, oh, look, I'm off camera. Golly, I need someone to do this for me. Okay, look out, you guys. All right, we're good. <laughs> anyway, something I should tell you is in between coats, what I like to do is I like to get a Ziploc bag. Oh, I'm still crooked. A Ziploc bag, look at this color. <laughs> anyway, I get distracted. A Ziploc bag to put my brush in until I'm completely done. So, and that way you don't have to continually wash them. It's been probably 20 minutes and this paint is dry. That's one of the wonders of the Country Chic paint that it dries so quickly. And so you're able to do more projects in a quicker amount of time. So let's give this little baby a second coat. Oh man, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with for color names for this. It is so pretty, so pretty. It's kind of a, oh, I'm still kind of wacky. It's kind of a vintage. This is gonna be like the worst video ever. So, which is good. That means every video after that will be better, right? Yeah, let's hope. Anyway, so this is kind of like a, one of those vintage 1950s colors. And remember, we got to dab and get right into the little cracks and crevices. So I usually do two coats. You don't always have to. Sometimes I even do three. It just depends. That's going to be completely up to you. Is this green or is this turquoise? Yeah. I don't know. So something to remember too, when you're doing your second and third or however many coats you decide to do, always make sure that your piece is completely dry before applying the second coat. So reason being for that is, it's almost like each coat will reactivate because it's a water-based paint. So it will reactivate the paint if it's not completely dry and you're just gonna pull it off. So if you wanna dry it a little bit faster, you can use a heat gun, you can use a blow dryer. Anybody that's taken my class knows you can use the blow dryer. Just gotta be a little bit careful though because you can put cracks in the paint, which I love that. I think it gives it an old world look, but that might not be the look that you're going for. Oh my gosh, this color. Hey, maybe I should talk to Jen on my hairdresser, see if she can put some of this color in my hair. Don't laugh, it usually is anyway. All right, and you wanna make sure that you're not leaving any drips behind. Just do some smooth go through right afterwards. Make sure there's no place that's too drippy. I don't know, looks pretty good. What do you think, you guys? Yeah, I think I'm gonna do three coats. Okay, let's put that one to the side. 
and let's get the, what did I say this is called? It's gonna take me a while to remember all these new ones. Pop the bubbly. Let's pop the bubbly on this big sucker. Alrighty, that's another one we're gonna have to, it's got all these little grooves we're gonna have to get right in there. Don't be afraid to abuse these brushes, these ones from Country Chic Paint, because they can take it. Um, when I first started painting, I used cheap brushes, and that's okay, because I always think, you know, rather just get going. If you can't afford a good brush right away, that's perfectly understandable. I couldn't. But start with the best one that you can buy. Same with paint. I really, I have painted with latex before. I've painted with some cheaper brands. I painted with some good brands too. But try to get the best paint and best products that you can afford. If you're thinking of doing this as a business, you know, everybody starts somewhere. But I do recommend that once you get going, and if you can afford it, treat yourself to a really nice brush. My favorites are this one and a half from Country Chic Paint, and also Paint Pixie makes a really good brush too. I think you can get them through Amazon. Oh, look at this, this is kind of a, what color is this, you guys? It's such a pretty neutral, it's a classic. So what should we talk about? Let's talk about, when I started painting. So I went away and went and visited a friend and she is an antique collector like me. And I walked into her house and she had this beautiful, beautiful white painted dresser. But it wasn't just white, it was distressed. And I'd never really seen distressing. I'd never seen any kind of a chalk or clay based paint before. And when I saw what she did to that dresser, she said it was easy, which you guys, it is. I thought I can do that. So she hooked me up with where she ordered the paint. I got the paint. I found myself a little piece of furniture at home. I didn't go out and buy anything. So I painted that baby and wow, I was hooked. And I think you guys will be hooked too. It looked different. Now I know there's those people out there that like their classic wood. And I too do like some antique pieces with classic wood. But some stuff needs painting. Some stuff seriously needs painting. There are some ugly pieces of furniture out there, you guys. Agree? Disagree? So that's basically how I got started. Ended up selling that piece thinking, hey, if I could sell a couple of pieces, I could probably buy a little more coffee. You know, me and my Timmy's. And that's how it happened. And now I am so crazy, I own a store, 712 4th Street Southeast in Medicine Hat. I still have to work full time. It's okay, I kind of like my other job too. But I just love painting. I paint seven days a week. All right, how do you think that's looking, you guys? Yeah, this baby's gonna need another coat as well. Pretty good, though. It's looking good. So just take your brush and just kind of make sure you don't have any drips. Just gently. You wanna do this really light, or like I said, you're gonna take off. Ooh, there's a spot, oops. You're gonna take off paint rather than fix it. All righty. We're done for about another 20 minutes. I better shut this thing off. See you soon. Okay, we're back. Alrighty, well I think I'm just gonna put another little coat on these guys. Just because I really wanna enhance this color. What do you think so far? Think this is something that you could do? Comment below, you guys, and let me know what other kinds of videos you want. I've got a really cute table over there that I think I might do a video on. So what's holding you back from painting? Not something you ever considered? Not quite sure how? 
So you can always come to one of my workshops. Let's talk about what I do at the workshops. Hey, I think this looks pretty good. What do you guys think? All right, we'll go on to the next one. So at the workshop, I do practice boards with you guys. So I give you two chunks of wood. And what we like to do, or as I like to have you do, is I like to have you practice on these boards with two paints. So we'll do a dark coat on one and a light coat on the other, and then we'll reverse it. We'll put the light on the dark and dark on the light, and then we're gonna distress back a little bit. So why? Just to show you what it looks like when you layer two different colors. I think it is a really cool technique I just finished um, a little item for a lady, a little huge jewelry box actually, and she picked two of the coolest colors. It was a gray and a blue. So basically the blue underneath and the gray on top. Oh, what a great combination. Sometimes my clients come up with the coolest combinations that I would never even have thought of. And I love that because tap into everybody's creativity, right? Anyway, the workshops. So we do a couple of boards. We go right from the very start. I show you how to prep if you need to prep. We do the painting. And then I like to do distressing and then a wax finish. Uh, a lot of people don't think that wax holds up. But I'll tell you something. I've got some pieces at home because that's all I did when I first started was wax. And those pieces I have never re-waxed. I have spilled coffee and anybody that knows me knows I spill coffee all the time. And I have spilled coffee on those pieces. It just kind of slides off. I never have to worry about it. So don't be afraid to seal with wax. Usually wax takes about 21 to days to a month to completely cure. But once it's cured, if it is so strong. And just think about it years ago, what did our moms and grandmoms do? They wax their floors. They wax their floors to help protect them. Hey, this is looking good. And because they knew that the wax, once it was cured, was strong. So don't be afraid to use wax. But there are other products that you can use to seal. But I like to, in our workshops, just get the basics done first. Has anybody out there taken one of the workshops? Let me know what you liked about it. Let me know what you didn't like. No, I hope not too much. One thing we usually do is we have a lot of fun, that's for sure. And now that I'm at the new shop, I have a beautiful area where I can have about 18 people with lots of space. So I'm really excited to start those workshops here in this space. Alrighty. Guys, I think I've got it. There wasn't much to fix up. Just me being a little bit fussier. Okay, I'm going to let this dry and we'll come back and I'm gonna show you a little bit of wet distressing and then we're gonna seal with some wax. So hang on. Okay, we're back. I have gone and got my paint put away. Um, good idea, wash out your brushes as soon as you're done painting or else soak them in some water. Make sure you don't get the metal bands wet. Um, I use two different products. I go back and forth. Um, I use Dawn dish soap to clean my brushes, but I also use the Country Chic brush soap. It is really, really nice. It's nice on your hands. It's kind of got, I think it's like a eucalyptus smell and it really does clean the brush as well. Um, because this is a clay-based paint, and it is water soluble. The brushes usually clean up so nice. Just rinse them under warm water. Just work them, make sure you keep them in the shape that they're in and they should come out really super cool. Make sure that you're sealing up your paint. You don't wanna leave it open at all because what will happen is it will just dry because it's clay, it'll dry out. Remember playing with clay at school in art class? Yeah, boy, I was terrible at that. So yeah, it'll dry out. Um, because it's clay-based, and if you get some little drips like I did here, the next time you go to open your lid, it can be super difficult. It's almost like contact cement. So what I recommend is really clean your lid, and I'm gonna tell you to do that, but I never do. 
But if you've got some, this is a pro tip, some Vaseline, even some of our country chic wax, dip your finger in and put it all around and then tighten your jar because it just kind of gives it so that the clay won't, won't seal the jar together. I've gotten in there with butter knives. I've got my son. Um, if that happens, what you can do is run it under really warm water and eventually it should, but why not just use like the Vaseline or the wax around the rim, put on the lid and that way you don't have to worry about it for next time. Okay, so what am I gonna do next? Now we're gonna what I call wet distress. So distressing with dressers and can often, big pieces of furniture can often be done and I usually do it with 220 grit sandpaper or I use my sander. And same thing, 220 grit sandpaper. But with pieces like this, you don't want to get down to the wood. You don't want to get, because you just want to bring out these beautiful accents on here. So you take a cloth, whatever cloth you've got available. I'm using J cloths because that's what I actually have in the shop. And you don't want them really, really wet, just kind of damp. And where do you distress? I like to distress all the raised mm, pieces on it. So let's have a look. Can you guys see this okay? I hope so. So you're just gonna take and, oh, look at that, holy. Can you see that? Is that focusing? Oh my gosh, how beautiful is that? <laughs> I know. I. I have no life. I get so excited about distressing. So as you can see, that's all I'm doing. I'm just taking and wiping back the paint to show the beautiful accents underneath. Okay, you don't have to do this. If this isn't the look that you like, you don't have to do it. You can leave it plain. If you just like the color, good enough. That works. Me, I gotta have distressing and chippiness in my paint. That's just my style. But my style isn't everybody's style. And that's what is kind of nice about the Country Chic paint too. It's so versatile. You can wet distress it, you can distress it, or you can leave it in a smooth, modern finish. Now, you're probably gonna get some brush strokes because this is a clay-based paint. And it's thick and that is what hand painting is you'll get those brush strokes there's ways to get out most of them but if you really want a smooth finish you know what I'd recommend get a sprayer and spray it because you can also spray country chic paint and that is awesome if that's what you want is that modern oh my gosh seriously I keep interrupting myself but look at this that is what I like to see. Chippy enough? Yeah, I think so. Another little trick, pro chip. If you have a little drip or a little thick spot, the good thing about water soluble paint is, I got a little one right there. We're gonna just distress it. And guess what? That spot was never there. Nobody will know the difference. All right, let's go on to the uh, Pop the bubbly. Told you I'd never remember this name. It's gonna take me a while. Okay, there we go. Once again, I got a different cloth because you don't want the green going on top of the brown, right? All right. So let's do a little wet distressing. I have a feeling this one's gonna look pretty too. Ooh, nice. And if you have, say, a white lamp, that you wanted to paint, distressing it back, say if you had this color, and you distressed back the white, that is also gorgeous. It doesn't have to be a dark color. Oh yeah, here we go, we're getting some chippy. So weigh in, comment below. Let me know what kind of shades you would put on this or what colors? Honestly, I can paint, but I can't pick a lampshade for the life of me. There has to be somebody out there that knows how to good, pick a good lampshade. What do you look for? Like color? Would you do plain? Ooh, look at that chippy. See? 
Alrighty. Now I think we're gonna get down to this middle. You guys see? Probably not. All right. This is so pretty. Yeah, let me know what kind of shades you put on them. I've seen actually some just with the skeleton shades. What do you guys think of that style? I kind of like it. Okay. There we go. Are you guys seeing any other pieces up top here that I should do? You think I'd have strong muscles doing this? Nope, no muscles. All right, let's get this base done. As you can see too, I taped off where the cord goes into the base because I am notoriously sloppy painter. I really, really am. You guys are probably gonna be way better than me at this. And so I thought, well, better safe than sorry. Let's just do that. But you know what? Even if I'd gotten paint on there, that's no big deal. The fact that this is water soluble paint, it pretty much just wipes off. This table was actually a dark purple before I started. Little spray cleaner and it washes right off. So even if you spill on your floor, and you gotta get to it right away though, even right away I'm pretty sure I've left mine for about an hour hey look at this you guys right chippy 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 okay all right I'm thinking that looks pretty good about where I want to keep it. Oh, a little bit more up here. Okay, then you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna take a dry one and I'm just gonna dry it off quick and then we'll let it air dry. Get all that water off there. This little guy looks like he's dry already. Oh, oh, oh. perfect. Now, why don't we wax them? Okay, I'm gonna sneak off camera. 20 seconds, don't time me, I'm really slow. I'll be right back. You can probably still hear me. Everybody says they can hear me in Redcliffe. Which I'm pretty sure is true. So, how to wax? I got my Country Chic Natural Wax here. So natural means it's basically just clear. You can also wax with colored waxes. Let's get into that on a later date. Let's just do a basic today. So we've got our nice wax. None of these products smell bad. You remember when you're, you paint your walls or something, or if you paint your walls with that latex paint, it is so bad that you can't even, oh, stand being in the room. Yeah, I painted my house, I painted at my kitchen table. You don't have to worry about that with these all natural paints. It is so nice to be able to do a project anywhere and not worry about the scent. So the wax, you'll need wax. Ever how about a wax brush? You don't have to use a wax brush. When I first started, I used a rag. I find that I went through so much of the wax because of course it would absorb onto the rag. These cute little country chic paint uh, wax brushes do the job. And why I like the brush is they will get in between the grooves. Alrighty, so how much wax do you put on? Uh, not a lot, really not a lot, because you're gonna be taking some of this off. So you just want a little bit, let me see. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that, but that's not very much. Now, where are we gonna do it? All over. Let's just work that into the grooves. You remember that movie? Anybody that's taken my uh, classes knows what I'm gonna say. Wax on, wax off. Well, that's basically what we're gonna do. I am going to push and dig all of this wax into the paint. And this is so nice if you get it on your hands too. <laughs> just saying. So you see how it changes the color? What it does, it doesn't really change the color, it just richens the color and almost brings it back 
to where it was before. All right. Oh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Let's do the big kahuna. All right, make sure before you start waxing that your piece is dry if you were wet distressing. Um, make sure it's completely dry from the paint. All righty, same thing. Let's just get that all into the grooves. So with waxing, like I mentioned before, it takes about 21 days to a month to fully cure. So cure, that's when it like hardens and it is tough once it's hardened, but it'll take a while so that you can use it, especially if it's lamps, that's not a big deal. Put the light bulb in, put your shade on, use them. But if you had like a tabletop or something like that, you can use it still, but you wanna be super gentle with it. So you're gonna to wanna to put maybe coasters or something on it until it's completely cured. All right, how's this looking? See any spots you guys that I missed? Okay, good, I think we're good. I'm really tactile, so I like to get my hands on stuff. And you would feel where you haven't waxed. You would be able to feel it with your hands because it would be dry. Everywhere else should be kind of that waxy. Okay, look at that. We've got that wax on. I'm taking it off right away. And all I'm doing is not taking it off. I'm just taking off the excess. Just that little excess that makes it greasy. So what happens with the chalk paint is when you put the wax on, it goes and it, it's like dry skin. It just sucks in that moisture. And that's what makes it such a great seal. All right, everyone can see what I'm doing. Little baby, let's take most of his wax off. You can almost see a shine starting right away, right? Okay, so when you've got all your wax off, you'll be able to feel it. If you've got any spots where the wax is still sitting, it'll kind of stick. You'll be able to feel that. So I take most of the wax off, all right? Let's do the other one. Boop. Okay. So you don't have to use J cloths. You, anything that's kind of a lint free rag works really well. Um, if you got husbands or sons, steal their t shirts, the old ones, and their underwear. <laughs> really, seriously, not flannel. I don't know what your husband or your boyfriend or whatever wears. But anything that's kind of a lint-free rag will work really, really well. Why go out and spend a bunch of money if you don't have to? Especially if when you're first getting started, when you're first experimenting, right? Okay. Hey, that baby was drinking that wax like crazy. All right. Good. I think that's good. I think that's good. Now what I'm going to do with these two pieces, let's have a look at them here. Oh, that one's heavy. Oh, so what I'm going to do with these two pieces is now that I've got the majority of the wax on, I'm going to leave them for 24 hours. So tomorrow I'm going to pop back in and I'm going to do what we call buffing them. So I'm going to take a lint free rag again. Doesn't matter. It could be this shop towels, those blue ones your husband or somebody's got some out in the garage go steal them they're pretty good or the t-shirt and I'm going to what I call buff them and that is I'm just gonna work the wax a little more if there's any left and it's gonna bring out a beautiful shine by buffing this hardens the wax too it just gets it going with that so I hope you enjoy this video I talk a lot so anybody that wanted a quiet video it came to the right place. Ha ha, kidding. So anyway, um, you know what you could do for me? If you like this video, would you give me a thumbs up? And anybody that wants to see more, comment what you would like to see. And down below, hit subscribe and the bell. The bell means it's a notification. So then whenever I do videos, that you'll get a notification and you can watch them. Give me a thumbs up, that would help. Because this channel is just getting started. 
or you can just ignore it. <laughs> anyway, it's been fun painting with you. Don't forget, you can buy all the supplies at the Shabby Vintage Bell at 712 4th Street Southeast. I'm open Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. Or you can contact me through Facebook, the Shabby Vintage Bell, or Instagram, the Shabby Vintage Bell. These products are so easy, so I would recommend if you want, come and buy the products and try it out. Sign up for a workshop. Either way, you know what, you guys? I really appreciate the support, and it's been great. Thanks a lot for joining me. Bye-bye.